This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Yeah, welcome to the show and uh, welcome, Leon. We're back at the office. Yeah, good to finally. see you. Yeah. How are I'm, you? I'm, I'm pretty good. Happy to be back at the office doing the Mordicast and not in remote anymore. <laughs> uh, we have some pretty exciting stuff on the table today and that True. is of course Mordic 4 or at yeah. least a, a a preview to Mordic and uh, for that matter we'll talk to Ruth Chisley our president of Mordic yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah and also we have a really big big list of things that we want to cover today lots of things from the forums and others and today we want to start with a little bit of housekeeping which we normally don't have much but today we even have twice yeah um so first is uh going back to the last episode where we mentioned joey's mjml uh, tutorial no and <laughs> i said oh it's it's a uh, nifty pretty, five minutes <laughs> pretty uh uh brief yeah. <laughs> and joey talked to me and said what do you mean brief it's a uh, 55 minutes and i said Oops! <laughs> um, I did never watch it myself. I only looked at the chapters that I saw after purchasing it, and that was the introduction, not the whole thing. So <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's a really extensive tutorial, and uh, various people at the office have, have seen it so far and are really happy with it. So big recommendation, Joey. The other thing is going back a little bit further to Modcast Twenty Four. Mm-hmm. where we uh, featured an, a new RSS to email plugin by, by a website called Mordic Apps, yeah. which is even titling itself the Mordic App Store. And at the time we said, okay, yes. the name is not so great, but it's good to have this plugin. Um, you know, the episode after, we, we mentioned that, that Chris, uh, Chris Driver, has now updated his own plugin, RSS to email. Yeah. Uh, which has had been around for a while and is available on GitHub. And it turns out that it's exactly the same plugin that is being sold legally by those guys at mordicapps.com, uh, uh, uh. uh, which is not so lovely. So no, no, um, it's not okay. Yeah, uh, I, I removed the link to the website from, from the show notes of 24. Yeah. And apologies to Chris uh, and keep up the work, please do. Yeah. Good. Okay, then... Moving on to f- to WordPress. Yeah, let's start yeah. With, with WordPress, which is a not uncommon combination with Mordic, obviously. True. And a, an even more uh, common thing is that you want to integrate forms. Yeah. So uh, lead generation w- takes a form, and, and WordPress has very beautiful form uh, extensions, um, such as CF7 or Ninja Forms or Formidable Forms. Um, But to integrate those is obviously not the same as uh, boilerplate Mordic form uh, JavaScript code. Um, So the question is, how can you get the best out of both? And um, in the past, we saw plugins which did that, etc. But obviously, there is a much easier way, and it has been documented from... Wow, 2016 or so. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, it has now uh, popped up once again in the forum. So I thought it's worth giving it giving it a mention. It's basically um, the idea to to allow WordPress to forward the the form entry to Mordic. Yeah. So similar to what we do in Mordic with with a form action called post result to another form, we can do the same in in WordPress. Where we, where we let WordPress send the result to Mordic. But not, not only to Mordic. Ah, to, to any yeah. third-party yeah. integration you want exactly. to. Yeah. But yeah. In, our, in our scenario, it, it would go to Mordic. Yeah. You have to set it up properly. And then uh, you can use the form. Uh, this is beautiful things like Ninja Forms. And let it send to Mordic in the background. Yeah. And I know that you had the very same topic yeah. <laughs> just uh, just a bit ago, uh, Leon. And um, that's obviously a 
much more straightforward way than, than using plugins, right? Yeah, it seems to be omnipotent, I gotta say. If we can even use it for uh, I say contact form 7 and ninja forms and even formidable forms, we are not relying on... I think I saw the ninja forms modic plugin being last updated around 215 or something. It's been pretty yeah. old as well. And yeah, yeah. I, using that seems to be a much more easy and nicer way. Yeah, and you avoid all the, the OAuth struggles oh, yeah. API. <laughs> the OAuth struggles are yeah. a different so, so topic. Take a look at the forums. It, it's a pretty good documentation there on, on how to set it up. It's it's pretty much unchanged from five years ago. Uh, so I guess I'll link to both articles in the show notes and uh, take a look there. Yeah. And we got something about the yeah, I say f Facebook custom audiences. Um, there's been a post in a forum, I think, by Patrick Eidmiller from America, if I'm not wrong. And uh, yeah, he wrote an entry about how to get your Mordic contacts and upload them to the Facebook custom audiences using uh, Integromat, mm -hmm. which is pretty handy. You gotta consider GDPR where it's necessary with uploading your contact information to Facebook. Yeah. Um, you gotta like watch out where it is maybe important. But then you can use your modic contacts and um, yeah, play your ads or whatever you use your custom audience in Facebook for. Yeah, for all who are in, into that sort of marketing, yeah. it's a powerful thing to connect that to modic directly. There are other ways of, of remarketing, etc., which are even lower level, mm -hmm. which don't require the contact, but but do pixel or tracking pixel, whatever. Uh, maybe it's the topic for itself for for another show. Yeah, yeah surely. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but for now, Facebook custom audiences. I think that it's never been really documented any, anywhere. So so Patrick did a in in response to a face uh, to to a forum question, did a pretty good job in, in describing on high level what what he did and i think it's helpful for everyone who is going the same direction so take a look to that link will be in the show notes <laughs> yeah and sticking to the forum um coming to the future wish list of the modicast episode um the user ed hanika wrote that he'd like to have lead source tracking in modic um but not especially for i say utm parameters which we already have yeah, yeah. Uh, but more for if he came from organic traffic or pay traffic or social i think that's a feature which is pretty common in google analytics or matomo other yeah analytic tools but we don't have that in modic yet yeah and obviously you don't want this for statistical reasons like you would in anal analytics yeah but you want to act on it so if somebody comes in, in through through paid you may different you want may want different behavior than than if he or she comes in through social media true i i would guess <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> yeah um yeah I, I like the idea and i think there's certainly even more that you can put into this this approach and uh, so as a future direction for tracking and, and contact handling etc that's certainly a good wish list item so there it is um we had even more from the forum yeah <laughs> this one is um or has been initiated through the modic help desk meetup mm -hmm. uh which we talked about a couple a couple episodes uh, ago a while ago um and it was uh taken up by, or picked up by by joey who is one of one of the um hosts of of the help modic help desk mm -hmm. and so he came up with with a longish forum question says hey what do you think is important for learning modic and that was a tremendous thread because he, he received such a lot of feedback and among that feedback was a huge list of resources compiled by john turgey and uh, yeah we'll link to that thread but also to the spreadsheet as well it's it's a raw google spreadsheet but i think it's it's good stuff for everybody um so yeah uh, take a look uh, it's always good to have resources handy. There's still the website uh, by Chris Calabro, which is 
to me still the number one resource yep. but uh, keeping that updated and uh, adding more to the mix and letting things of that in flow into the knowledge base um, is uh, fairly important so yeah good stuff yeah and as we had now three <laughs> articles will be fished from the forum there's a friendly reminder for you out there to if you have a question or want to discuss something please use the forum so others can find it and maybe answer your question instead of facebook we've seen a lot of activity in facebook forums which is nice i gotta say but to have it archived for others so others who have the same problem can just look into the forums and find the answer you need to use the forum so please just a uh, gentle reminder not <laughs> use the forums and not facebook yeah i agree i agree i mean it's good that we have such a lot of traffic on both sides now yeah. in, on the website forum and in facebook uh, a little bit in, in linkedin and other places but but after all we are still split um and that doesn't make any sense so and then also as you say it's not indexed by google yeah. so yeah for long term it's let's just move on better. from from facebook to the, the forums. joint forums yeah, yeah. good uh, moving on um let's go to mordic 4 we're obviously not yet live but but pretty close to live now the beta has been out for two weeks now um and We're all getting excited, so I thought it's high time to interview Ruth about the details of Mordic 4. Here we go. Okay, and there we go. Welcome back to the show, Ruth Cheesley. Hey, good to see you. Good to have you. Hello. How are you today? Great, thank you. Enjoying the sunshine here in the UK, finally, oh, after about a month here. of rain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've been waiting for it, really. Um, yeah, you've been... Uh, on the show before this time i asked you if you could speak about mordic 4 which of course uh, everybody is, is looking forward to uh before we go there maybe for this three listeners out there that don't know you or may maybe those who uh, are, are not up to speed with latest and greatest can you give us a little bit of background on your role within mordic yeah sure so um a couple of years ago, I came on board with Acquio to help with running the community, basically. And um, just over a year ago, I stepped up to become project lead. So that means that I'm kind of um, responsible for the direction of Mortic, the future direction of Mortic, but also supporting the community. So, yeah, my role is quite diverse. I get involved in quite a lot of things, but ultimately it's like helping people in the community to be able to contribute helping the project itself to be clear on our direction and trying to remove roadblocks that are causing you know problems in any of those areas <laughs> oh well, that sounds like a really narrow description of all the the magic that you pull <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think it's most... quite hard to describe all the things that i get yeah. involved in but uh, it's basically a uh, tree said to me when i started this job that He sees it as like doing what needs to be done. And really that's a good description when you're a project lead. It's yeah. Doing what needs to be done. So among the things um, that you're doing is uh, acting as a release, release manager for Mordic 4. Though that's what we want to talk about today, right? Yeah. It's um, only last year that, that Mordic 3 came, oh, three? <laughs> came to the light of the earth. Um, yeah. And... Uh, That alone was a really big deal. Another big deal was that the product team introduced a, a rhythm for minor updates and patches and uh, actually delivered on that. So, so fantastic job. And uh, we've been talking about that in, on the show. Um, and also, it was pretty clear by then that we would need another major release pretty soon uh, due to the, well, the under the hood things. And a major release is always defined by, by breaking changes, as I understand it. But um, maybe you can give, give us a bigger picture. Where are we on the road to Mordic 4? What, what is the, the, the timeline for the release, etc. Before, before we go into what is inside of it? Uh, what's the timeline? Yeah, sure. So we're actually running a little bit behind schedule uh, for Mordic 4. 
So we were due to be releasing on the 28th of May, and it's now the 1st of June when we're recording this. Um, the main reason for that is we've not had a huge amount of people helping us with testing, um, but also with helping us fixing bugs that we find as, as we're testing uh, within the team. So, you know, we, we d don't want to release software that has more bugs than the previous version, if that makes sense. Oh. So when we find bugs, we need to have them fixed. And then when they're fixed, we need to have them tested. Um, so that's why we're running a bit behind. Uh, in terms of the schedule, we released the beta, which had an awful lot of new features and bug fixes since the alpha. So we released that last week. Mm -hmm. And we were planning to release the release candidate on Monday, but we haven't really done enough testing on the upgrading part. So like if you're already running Mautic 3.3, uh, and you need to update to Mautic 4. We haven't done enough testing on that. So that's probably going to be pushed back to next week, mm -hmm. thinking, which will be the 7th of June, um, assuming all goes well with that testing. So really, I'm thinking we're realistically going to be releasing the um, general availability. So that's when everyone gets that nice little message to say there's an update available. Um, probably around or more likely after Mautic Conference Global. The reason I say more likely after is because a lot of the people involved in the release process are also involved in Mautic Conference Global. So we're going to have a lot of stuff on. So it might be that we actually wait until after the event. Yeah, frankly, um, I'm, I'm all for that. R rather give it a, another week or two or three uh, than, than shelling out untested or, or bad so bad software. Yeah, and, yeah. And yeah. there's lots of moving parts. You know, we've had some really major things that have been um, contributed to in Mautic 4. So we do really need to make sure that they all work as they're expected to work. One thing that we definitely won't have, which we were hoping to have, is PHP 8 support. Hmm. So that's most likely going to come in the 4.1 release, which will be three months after we release 4.0, purely because, well, firstly, because we haven't quite finished um, the pull request to actually implement it, but also some of the um, libraries and tools that we're dependent on haven't actually finally finished implementing PHP 8 support themselves. Mm -hmm. So we sort of have to wait for them to actually get that in their software so that we can then ship it for us. But we've, we've done a lot of work to make sure we're ready for it in Mautic 4. So it's coming, just it won't be coming with the 4.0 release. Yeah, no, that's, that's cool. It's one of those under the hood features uh, that not too many people would care about at this point with, with PHP 8 not being mainstream yet. Uh, so mm -hmm. let's talk about uh, what is in Mautic 4, what is features, enhancement, or, or hidden hidden gems, etc. Do you have any things that you want to bring up? Yeah, so if we start with the under the hood stuff, so this is the stuff that's not particularly exciting to the average user of Mautic, but it's important stuff and it may be exciting to developers. <laughs> so um, the big one is Symphony 4, and you talked about earlier, like we knew that we had to do another major release, and that's because Symphony is the framework that we are based on in Mautic, and they have a release schedule, which means they have major releases and they drop support at certain points in time for the previous release. So we have to update to Symphony 4 because they're dropping support for Symphony 3, which is what we're on at the moment. Um, so that's that's included. I mentioned we had lots of um, updates to our underlying dependencies so that we can support PHP 8. Um, so that was uh, provided in the alpha release. We also did some um, refactoring and updating of old code that we didn't get around to doing in the Mautic 3 release. So this won't make much difference, but it's just like cleaning up, like cleaning house, you know, cleaning up old stuff. Mm -hmm. We've got some other ways to manage and install Mautic with Composer, which we can talk about a little bit later because that's one of the main initiatives. Um, anyone who's been doing 
pull request for Mortic will have at some point had me ask them to improve their test coverage. And um, thanks to all of those people, it's increased by 10% in the last year. So we've gone from about 31% of our code having automated test coverage to about 41% now. Wow. And that might seem like a small amount, but it's a huge amount of work to actually write those automated tests. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, developers have had to completely pull apart the code and rewrite it in order to write tests. So big hugs to all you developers who've pursued yeah, our and, requests. And uh, same to you, because, because I, I, I know it, it's a drag. And I also know it, it involves a lot of education too, because many developers are not even familiar with the concept or, or are not... Uh, used to doing it as thoroughly as, as we do it in Mordic now. And, and so that's a big step forward in the future. Yeah, and we have had some real pushback from some people who've said, I don't understand why I need to write tests because there weren't tests there before. Um, and we've been kind of quite understanding, but also quite firm in that, well, we have to improve this coverage somehow. And this mm. is how we're doing it, by not merging any pull requests that either reduce that, that reduce coverage so they have to either maintain it at the level that it's at or they have to improve coverage yeah. so um we've made a couple of exceptions where we know that a developer is going to write the tests for us but they haven't quite got it ready in time to merge the pull request so then we've said okay we'll merge the pull request but then merge the test later shh, don't but, tell I mean, anyone <laughs> yeah shh, don't tell people those are people yeah. who we know will be good for their words so yeah. That's been massive, but we've also had some people from Acquia working on improving the efficiency of our automated tests because sometimes they can take like half an hour for all the tests to run, which can be a real pain. Mm. And some of these have resulted in massive improvements in, in efficiency. So so that's a big thing for us as a project. Um, another under the hood thing is um, we now dynamically detect the database that you're using We used to hard code it, and that caused a few problems in previous releases, particularly with more people using MariahDB than MySQL now. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a tab in Mortic now which has your database info, so it helps enormously when you're debugging stuff or helping people in the forums because you can say, go to the database info tab, and it will tell you what database version you're using. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. Um, and there's a bunch of performance and scalability improvements that have come in as well. So yeah, that's so, so, under the hood. Yeah, so, so we have two things basically. One is more on the side of technical debt. So things that yeah. we should have done in the past and you know, finally get around or got around doing. And the other is yeah. that we do have some actual improvements that, that mm -hmm. help all the admins, et cetera, out there. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's get and to we're the still fancy chipping stuff. away at those things, you yeah. know, like <laughs> test coverage and things. We're still chipping away at. So, um, yeah, and then user-facing stuff. So the things that people who use Mortic might be interested in. We finally got the test coverage for the tag management user interface increased Ooh. enough to merge it. Woohoo! I think that was <laughs> some of your team who, who heard provided that. Yeah. Um, so you can now go to tags in the left-hand menu. You'll see all the tags that are in use. You can create new tags from there. You can manage them, like delete them and what have you. You can see people who are um, assigned to that tag by clicking on a link, although there was a bug report I saw this morning. So I need to check that out. So that's great for users. I think that's been a real um, feature that's been missing. So yeah, super. Um, Another thing is the new email and landing page builder. So that will be available by default, but you can turn it off and go back to the legacy builder if you want to in Mortic mm -hmm. 4. In Mortic 5, we will be removing the legacy builder altogether. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's for emails and landing pages, and that's using Grapes.js if you haven't come across it before, which is an open source uh, framework. And that has been predominantly done by Web Mechanic and idea to who are two of our community partners. Um, they've been really great on that initiative. Um, yeah, and we have email, some new email themes that are Ooh. working with that new builder. So mm -hmm. there's four new email themes, um, some super simple that are just like, it looks just like a personal email and some nice and snazzy and pretty. Um, 
but it's a it's a drag and drop editor, so you can do lots of really exciting things with it. Um, what else have we got? The marketplace. So this is read only. You can't actually manage plugins with it yet, but you can get a sense of what it's going to be like in the basic basic version of the marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, there's a couple of other things like we've got a new rich text editor, but there's not much change between the old one and the new one. It's pretty similar. Um, we've in implemented a small change to the user interface for the save and save, apply and cancel. So it's now save, save and close or cancel in that order. So it's better aligned with UX best practices. Yeah, so, we're, we're getting there. <laughs> yeah, we're getting there slowly but surely. So, um, and it's also like green and red. So visually you can see the difference as well. So in the end, it's it's not like the upgrade to Mordic 3 where, where people would find pretty much the same user interface, would have to look really deep to find any differences. Now we do have quite a good number of, of different things, of better things, of advanced things, etc. Um, yeah, for sure. And there were actually more that we would like to have included, but mm -hmm. we just didn't have enough people testing the features to get them through the thresholds that we require to mm. be able to actually include them in the release. So yeah, maybe <laughs> the more testers we have, yeah. the more we can include. Yeah, may maybe not all of them are necessarily breaking changes, so they can come with 4.1, yeah. 4.2. Absolutely. Whatever, right? Mm -hmm. That's good. That's OK. It's it's nice yeah. to receive new things <laughs> over the, yeah. the course yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you already mentioned that some of those things came from initiatives um mm -hmm. are any of those i mean i don't want to go, to go too deep into initiative and target teams etc but but mm -hmm. are any of these initiatives done with this release of uh, modic 4 or are they still uh, working on on a even more advanced uh target for the initiative yeah, so the Composer Initiative, this one's mostly been contributed by Drop Solid by mm. Nick Wienhoff, um, mm. is pretty much done for the first phase. So we have a couple of phases in this initiative because a lot of things were dependent on phase one being completed, like the Mortic Marketplace can't move forward until certain parts of the Composer Initiative were yeah. implemented. So pretty much that's been completed we have a couple of things to test we have a couple of things to um make sure that they're working as expected and we have a lot of documentation to follow up on that's pretty much done mm -hmm. um and that also had some prerequisites for the next generation project so some of the work we've done in composer initiative is actually laying the foundations for what we're going to be doing in the next generation project um so that's very exciting and the builders initiative as well. Uh, so we initially started this initiative uh, doing email and landing page builders with Grapes.js. So we've pretty much done that. I talked about that a bit earlier. There's a couple of bugs that we're working on. There's a couple of areas where um, we're slightly tweaking the code to make it better for developers to work with. Adrian Schimpf is working on that from idea to. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to improve the test coverage from the JavaScript side of things on the builder but that's pretty much done i'd like us to have a phase two for that where we think about where else we could actually improve the experience using a builder so kind of dropping seeds of like maybe the forms section and the focus items might benefit from having a builder experience but that mm -hmm. will be like a phase two or a separate initiative entirely yeah so. okay um you already mentioned uh the next generation of Mordic. I'd like to discuss that in a minute as well. But mm -hmm. but I know that many people are keen to learn about the process of upgrading from Mordic 3 yeah. to Mordic 4. How big of a deal is that? And how well supported uh, so will, I, it, will it be? Yeah, so I've just been testing that before I came on this call, actually. Ooh. And the exciting thing is that it looks like we can just do the usual process of take a backup and make sure your backup works. And then Mortic update find, Mortic update apply, and you're on Mortic 4. 
there's a couple of issues we're going to have where we need people to make a couple of changes to any email themes or landing page themes templates that you have mm -hmm. um because we now have a way of saying this template is able to be used in these builders yeah. so there'll be a one line change that will need to be made to um configuration files for your themes which we will have documented but other than that i was able to test that locally and it all worked and the world didn't end <laughs> hmm. i was able to navigate around all the areas <laughs> yeah. so we need to do more testing on that but it looks like it will just be a standard mortic update rather than mortic 3 like 2 to 3 which was a specific script you had to run to do the update mm -hmm. what about the api and then the auth uh, so in OR, in terms of OAuth, we are uh, removing OAuth 1. I mean, it hasn't been supported since 2012. Mm -hmm. So it's long overdue being removed. Mm -hmm. um, we will have OAuth 2 client credentials, which is uh, two-legged authentication. So that can often be used as a drop-in replacement. Mm -hmm. And we all still have OAuth 2. So they should all continue to work as expected. Okay. And the API I haven't done any testing on yet, but as far as I'm aware, that should also continue to work. Ooh. Okay. So, so the yeah, only so thing will probably as I say, more testing required. So don't take my word for it. I mean, in a week's time, we might be in a different place. Oh, so. you're you're <laughs> on the record here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but surely the the um, plugin authors uh, developers will have to make sure that they still work well on, on uh, symphony 4 right they will have some work to do yes so um if they if developers need to know what changes there are we yeah. have an upgrade dash 4.0 file in the github repository mm -hmm. and that should tell you everything that's been um deprecated or removed yeah. Yeah. and so that's the thing to look at but pretty much once we release the beta the vast majority of the changes that are going to be made mm -hmm. will be uh, stable from there on so okay. between beta and release candidate usually there might be some bug fixes there may be some minor features that make it over the line but okay. generally speaking most of the stuff will be there okay cool that, that's good to know uh, okay, and so conservatively, the the RC, the release candidate, will be the version that I want to test my own plugins against, right? Yeah, I mean, I would say you can start doing that with the beta version, which okay. is available now locally in a local environment. So we don't want people to be testing the beta version in production yet, mm -hmm. please. Um but yeah, release candidate should be effectively. This is what we're planning to release. Yeah. Okay, but but um, I, I would guess that the, the bigger problem is the other way around. That that too few people are uh, trying out the beta, or if if they do, they don't mm -hmm. give the feedback, etc. So so the testing of the code, the the uh, pull requests, etc., is one thing. And by the way, you did a nice uh, YouTube video on, on testing that. Maybe we should link that in the show notes as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But that's in, in the process before anything is released. The other thing is once mm -hmm. a beta or a RC or whatever is being released, uh, I would guess you would still want the feedback. What's the best channel for people to give you feedback, th things that they find in the beta version, in the release candidate version? Is that yeah, still so GitHub? Yeah, I think what would be good is if you can join the Mortic4 channel on Slack. So oh. if you don't have an invite to Slack yet, you can go to mortic.org forward slash Slack mm -hmm. and, and join. Because that's a good place to say, hey, I've noticed this thing and I think it's Mortic4 specific. Anyone else, you know, and getting some input and we can help you find out if that's actually a bug or if it's just a misconfiguration yeah, or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, any bugs or issues that you find with Mortic4, it's very helpful if they do get raised on GitHub. You can put Mortic4 colon before the title of the um, issue. That really helps us when we're triaging to know that's a Mortic4 issue. Um, it's just one less thing for us to have to, to double check. Yeah. And then we will look at that and see if we can reproduce it and hopefully get it fixed. Awesome, awesome. Um, good, then let's talk about the uh longer term future uh, will there be mm -hmm. a 
Mordic 5 or will there only be a next generation or both or what do you think today? Yeah, it's a good question and I think it's one that we're still kind of figuring out ourselves really. Um, what we're trying to address with next generation are just some fundamental architectural issues that really, you know, they go back to when Mautic was first created with small to medium sized enterprise in mind rather mm. than medium to large. And um, it needs some really significant thinking in order to address those issues. So we're still looking at this with some technical architects. And last year in the Mautic conference, we gave some thoughts on where we think we're going and a sort of visions for where we're going. Some of those are still true. Some of them we're still kind of refining in a way. Um, the reason why there may be, need to be a Mautic 5 is timing, you know. So it's going to be quite a major job for the next generation project. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned earlier that Symphony does uh, has its own release cadence. So we don't want to get to the situation where Symphony 4 is no longer supported and is not getting security updates and we're still using it. Because if there's a security issue with Symphony 4, we won't actually get a fix for it. So by that point, we have to be on Symphony 5. And the issue we have there is the way that the front end of Mautic is done, the way everything you see as a user is all done using PHP templates. Mm. And that's been deprecated in Symphony 5. So we've got to basically redo the whole front end of Mautic. Uh, about 700 files need to be changed. Um, just just to address that issue, yep. you know, let alone all the rest of the changes with Symphony 5. So that's where the point where we have to decide, like, well, do we do we do that with the current Mautic and do a next generation project running alongside, or do we just go to next generation? Mm -hmm. um, I think we'll be making that decision in the not too distant future, uh, but there's still a lot that needs to be done in terms of knowing where we're going with next generation before we can make decisions on that. Mm. Fascinating. And that's uh, another initiative, right? Next Gen. Yes, Next Generation yeah. is an initiative. And when we started it, we did say we can't start the Next Generation pl project plan, really, until we finish Mautic 4, because so much of it was dependent on the changes we were doing in Mautic 4. Okay. Okay, so if anybody is interested, uh, please feel free to join the initiative and or sneak in and... Uh, and uh, yeah. yeah, get involved. Yeah, in particular, we're looking for people who have experience with um, Angular, uh, because we're thinking that the front end application will probably be written in Angular. Mm. Okay, interesting. So, yeah. Oh. Huh. <laughs> interesting. But you can actually see all of the information and you can watch back the calls that we've had where we've been talking about the plans for Mautic uh -huh. Next Generation um, on the Confluence page. So that will be linked in the channel on Slack. Okay. Good. Um, you already said we're recording this on, on June 1st. So that means that mm -hmm. uh, Morticon, the Mortic Conference, is only two weeks from now. Um, yep. Is there anything specifically that you want to pitch, that you want to recommend to people? Oh, wow. There's a thing. I think there are some really great talks. Um, I think it, it, what's the great thing for me is that we're able to bring together the whole community. So we're having the event over two days rather than one day this time. We've got a great training day happening on the day before as well. So there'll be two courses from OS training, the same courses they ran last year, mm -hmm. and also a webinar that's going to be done by um, Acquia, which is going to be aimed more at marketers who want to take things further with Mautic, and that's a two-hour webinar for free. Mm -hmm. So information is going to be going up about that very soon on the website. Um, I'd recommend just dropping in over the two days to the sessions that you're interested in. We've also got the community track where we'll be having opportunities for you to learn about how you can get started contributing to Mautic if you're not contributing at the moment. Um, and in the keynote, I'm going to be talking about some of the future things that we're looking at for Mautic and where where Mautic's going in the future and how you can be a part of that. So, yeah, we'd love to have you join us. And it's from $5, so it's quite affordable. You can give more. If you can give more, that's great. Um, but it's give what you can, 
Yeah, give what you can, take what you need. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we we go with that. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. I I can't wait. I'm I'm really curious. There's so many things to to talk about and to learn. Also, just like in this mm. conversation, we could have uh, chatted about so many other things. So uh, that means we need to do another one of these uh, interviews. <laughs> And I'm um, very much looking forward to, to that one. But for now, thank you so much for, for those insights into Mordic 4. And uh, yeah, see you at Mordicon. Absolutely. See you there. Thanks, Ruth. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, first of all, I got to say thank you, Ruth, for the time and the interview. And uh, me, myself, I tried the Mordic 4 beta already. And I got to say, I love the new feature of the marketplace. It's so... I'd say comprehensive and easy to not have all the different plugins which are not in the core, to download them using GitHub and going like on the server sites and stuff. So I think the marketplace is a feature we will see becoming more and more like interesting for the whole lot of the community. Yeah, yeah, it's a bunch of things, but but yeah, marketplace. There are a lot of people who have high expectations, like like you have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cool, good stuff. Um, now, when we go to events, it's it's so, so relieving now that is that a word? I don't know. It's a relief <laughs> anyway uh, that we have first discussions about real life events. Finally, back, back to uh, last century or whenever it was. <laughs> oh my god, no decade anyway. Um, so that's cool and uh, it will happen eventually for the meantime we still have good online things and they are there to stay like like our friends in, in Lagos Lagos Lagos, Lagos. sorry that's Nigeria not Portugal <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah led by, by our friend Toby or one Toby um, and um, that's good stuff for everybody it's in English and uh, with, with speakers from all around the world yep. so one, one of the best online events for Mordic And of course, as we already mentioned, the Mordic help desk format, it is also a meetup format, but it's a different type of animal. Yeah. Uh, if you have not yet checked it out, do check it out. Link is in the show notes. And of course, Mordicon is around the corner. Is around the corner. It's still the, the virtual event. Yeah. We still don't know for sure whether we will have a tiny little on-premise event uh, in Q4, but the virtual, the global Morticon is on, on June 17th or 16th through 17th, yeah. plus, plus the training day on 15th. So it's a three-day event this time. Yeah. If you haven't got your ticket, go get it. It's uh, starting from five US dollars. Um, cheap, yeah. You even get a really cool T-shirt for, for all the money, so it's good value, good content, <laughs> and hopefully fun as well. Yeah. Um, in, at our agency at Leuchtfeuer, we do have a couple of free tickets, and we're giving that to students like, like we gave uh, gave it last time. Yeah. Um, so if you're in need for a free ticket and can, can't afford a real one, Uh, we're happy to give this to you and to invite you to Morticon. One of the big deals at Morticon will be uh, the Tiger Teams. Mm -hmm. It has been uh, in in the making for a while. The, the initiatives yeah. have been hugely successful, as we discussed in the interview. The Tiger Teams are, are now at the verge of... of Uh, of pouncing, is that what, what <laughs> tigers do? <laughs> tigers do pounce. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so, yeah, if we're interested in in those tiger teams, there's a link in the show notes where you can look at the details. And of course, you should attend Morticon to learn more about it and to get into action. Yeah. There will be real interaction on tiger team topics. Um, if you, you want to go a little bit further and maybe... Uh, champion one of those tiger team topics like uh, whatever um, tracking as we mm -hmm. discussed earlier or forms or security or, or email or whatever yeah. um, please contact me directly uh, we are preparing basically a pitch or an explanation for every single one of those roughly 17, 17 tiger teams and wow. we're always yeah. happy, happy for 
people who can take over one of those pitches that is not an obligation for anything uh, in the future. Yeah. It may be a good starting point, but, but you may still change your mind, go to a different target team, whatever. Uh, we're basically happy to have people who are willing to take initiative at the Mordecon and um, that will then be the starting point for a lot of things following up. Okay, <laughs> uh, we will follow up at the next Mordecast. 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 Too many Mordies. Um, yeah, Mordecast, of course. Um, for this one, I want to mention our colleague Lamin, yeah. who has a lot of work in, in the post production of every single episode of the Mordecast in English, in German, with the interview and everything. Everything. And uh, he's, uh, he's doing a tremendous job. And so. Uh, shout out to you, Lamin, and <laughs> keep up with it. Great um, work. Yeah. And yeah, shout out to everybody else listening here. And uh, I hope we see you all at Morticon. And if not, give us a ping, give us uh, any sort of feedback in social Please. media, <laughs> like always. Uh, yeah, stay tuned, stay safe. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Cheers.